Amen. Hallelujah. You know, the um, the Holy Spirit always shows up. Amen. He always shows up. And we're so thankful for him. Good morning, Chris. You want to lead us in a praise song? Yes. You don't? I receive. I was sitting here thinking about yourself. You need to lead us in a praise song. You got a praise in your heart. He said, no, I don't. <laughs> You don't think a you can song, read. A song that I have for praise, I feel like uh, if you give me a week, I can provide. Okay, so next week when you come back, you can lead us in the praise song. Yeah, that's fine. You come in as long as I have a, yeah, I can do that. I appreciate that. Thank you. I don't sing for my praise. Say that again. I don't sing. But you're going to lead us in a praise song though, right? What well, does that matter? It doesn't. I'm just, oh, okay. I'm just so, so when I come in here, and I already know who you are. Yeah, so you don't have to make any apologies for who you are. I would. And the Holy Ghost already knows who you are. So if we want you to lead us in a praise song, you're going to lead. I lead in praise songs. I sound just as terrible as I could be, but I don't even care. It's a song in my heart. And I want you to lead us. Rhythm in my steps. Rains in my garment. For the spirit of heaviness. You live for ashes. Joy for my strength. Love overwhelming. Causes me to say. You made me glad. You made me glad, you made me glad, Lord I will rejoice because you have, you made me glad, you made me glad, you made me glad, Lord I will rejoice because you have, made me glad, oh yeah. You see how good I led that praise song? <laughs> you see then see I led that song honey all I did was I, I gave the inspiration so I led it and then it just came out um and I understand when you say everybody has a gift or a talent, we all do, but this is something that I strongly believe. Uh, the Bible says that some have a song, some have a psalm. You know, therefore, a psalm is a poet, it's, a, it's poetry. But the Bible says that when we all come together, that we should all be willing to share what God has given to us. And, um, as I said to Desiree yesterday, we I just have to repent to Desiree too for making her envelopes look like they look. I mean, I knew how to do it properly, but I just didn't have a full understanding of what had conspired. So I apologize for that. But nonetheless, I said to her yesterday, if there were no mistakes, what would we have to talk about? If everybody was perfect, what would we have to talk about? Amen. So we're different on purpose, and it's God's purpose. And we are beautiful on purpose. Every one of us. God has created us. Every one of us. He didn't make one mistake in creation. Amen. We are different, and he did it like that on purpose. Amen. We think different. We speak different. We 
process different, but all of us are of God. And we're going to talk about that this morning as we talk about communion. And we're going to talk about this power in this communion that we're about to receive. Amen? There's a power. You know, I want you to begin to understand and realize that you are very powerful people. Um, there are things that um, have been said to you or about you. Make sure you get the other one. Uh, there, there's things that have been said to you or about you, in front of you, behind your back, and you've taken some of those things and you believe them as being true. They've hindered your life. Some of them have helped you, but too many of them have hindered you, have hurt you, have uh, caused you to make decisions that weren't the best decision and so forth. But we're learning how to get rid of that. We're learning how to retrain our brain, rewire those memories and align our soul with our spirit. Amen. This is some good stuff we're learning. And I'm going to encourage you again to invite people to come. Be very assertive. The Holy Ghost said to me, he says, I always do my part. You got to do your part. And so we want to be very assertive in giving those cards out and encouraging the people to come and inviting them to come and just asking them to come. Come on with me. You can do it. People talk about how early it is. Well, Jesus is coming earlier than this. I don't know what time he's coming. The Bible says he, he, you, it could be in the middle of the night and he come back. We have no clue what time he's coming. And so the scripture says always be ready. So, you know, some people have to be at work earlier than 9 o'clock. So it's not too early. It's a wonderful time. I had one person say, I wish our church was at 9 o'clock. And we come in here, the early bird always catches the worm. So we come and we praise God, we worship him, we hear from him. And then we go on to the rest of the day. Amen. So I want to keep encouraging you on that. You can be seated this morning. I want to remind you because um, I'm going to I'm going to ask for them. Uh, I ask you to write down. What did I ask you to do? Okay, did I ask you to write down a negative thought? What did I ask you to write down? What did I say? They said, let me look at this. Okay, let me just ask you this. Did anybody do it? It makes me feel like you didn't do it. Right. Now, I ask you to do that because I really am going to ask for it today. So while, while you're sitting there and as I'm preaching, as the thought comes up, write it down to the side so you can have it. Yes. So, so what was the assignment? Because I mean, I wasn't uh -huh. I put it in the group. You still can't get the group. You didn't get it. Okay. Let's get them because I, I write you some good little nuggets. So you've got to write down the response because I'm, I'm assisting you in how to retrain your brain, how to rewire your brain, how to destroy the negative toxic thoughts and have the positive stay in there. It's meditation, but I'm, I'm assisting you. And so when I ask you to write down the responses, what would you say to that negative thought that talks about not tithing, not giving, not sowing seeds? Because this is the only way you're going to get it out of there. You've got to replace it. And, and your dopamine can't help you if you don't give it anything, right? But the dopamine is there to help you. What else is there to help you? Serotonin, what else do we say? That's okay. I'm not going to make you go into Wednesday night. I'm going to keep you in the Sunday morning. But I do want you in all seriousness. Did you see that other note I put in there about how, how much time? Did you see that note? 
Jesus asked for an hour and he's looking at me frowning. You don't you don't read the group? Okay. <laughs> Ask somebody to put you back in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it says if you won't respond, it kicks you out. Okay, so you gotta you gotta respond. It'll kick you out. It says it's not gonna have any loafers on the line. All right, so ask somebody to put you back in and then. So he says, Jesus asked you to, to watch with him how long? One hour. He says, Jesus says, could you not pray with me one hour? And then I'm asking you to think about yourself for how long? Ten minutes. Do you not have 10 minutes in a day to think about solely yourself? 100% you. We have this ingrained in us that we always want to think of the other person. Is that not true? And it's not wrong to think of other people. But you should also think about yourself. The Bible says that not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. He didn't say don't think of yourself. All right? And so in 10 minutes, I'm saying at least 10 minutes a day, you spend some time on yourself rewiring your brain. Amen? Can you give yourself 10 minutes? I'm asking for 10 minutes. You're asking for 10 minutes of yourself, right? Now, how, long do, how long is your favorite program? An hour? An hour? TV programs last an hour. Great. Hey, day in the morning, that's a long time. All right, so if you can watch that program for one hour, please give yourself how much? 10 minutes. Amen. So let's go. We're going to talk about communion today. <clears throat> and I want you to see this. You know, we've we've discussed this before, and I want to bring it up again today. The This power that, that the communion table affords us. It's good if you take communion at home. All right. We we take communion together here every third Sunday. But at home, it's good. You can go to the communion table when you have questions. Go to the communion table when there's been an attack against your body. Go to the communion table just for fellowship with the Lord, just to say, I just want to remember you. It's nothing I need, nothing I'm asking for. I just want you to know how connected I feel to you. So turn with me to Matthew 26. All right. Matthew 26. Verse 26 says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it. Jesus took the bread and blessed it. Jesus took the bread and broke it. Jesus took the bread and gave it to the disciples and made this statement, take, eat, this is my body. All right? So they had been at Passover meal Many times with Jesus, at least three times, because he preached in his ministry for three years, so at least three times. And so this time, though, he says, this is my body. And he took the cup. He gave thanks for the cup. Isn't that interesting? He blessed the bread, but he gave thanks for the cup. He blessed the bread. He gave thanks for the cup. Your body is blessed, amen, but that anointing, that blood, we give thanks for it, all right? Uh, he said, drink all, wait a minute, he gave thanks, he gave it to them and made this statement, drink you all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. He says, this blood in this cup is my blood. And this blood, I'm pouring it out for everybody because I'm getting rid of the sin problem. This is good news. We can give God praise right there. Jesus said, I'm getting rid of the sin problem. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for getting rid of the sin problem. And he says in verse 29, but I say to you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine 
until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. So, so although Jesus is communion, all right? Jesus is communion. It is his blood. It is his body. And yet he takes communion. He still consumes communion. Isn't that interesting? He still gets involved in this. Jesus, Jesus never sets himself outside of us. He's always with us. He promised. He says, I am going to be with you always, even until the end. Jesus is showing us, if you go through this, I'm going through it too. If you go through it, I'm going through it too. Amen. And so when we come to this communion table, we're remembering this is the body and the blood of Jesus. This is what? The body and the blood of Jesus. And we're consuming this. This communion table, we're coming to it. Jesus said, as often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. We're remembering. The, the communion table is reminding us. Amen. You have some reminders on your phone, you know, that it might tell you at 10 o'clock, I've got to do something in particular. At five o'clock, I need to do something in particular. And that sound goes off and it reminds you. When you hear that sound, it brings it back to your memory. Well, when you come to this table, when you're coming to take of this blood and this bread, it's reminding you of who you are. It's reminding you, wait a minute, you are the powerful one. You're the one joined to Jesus. You're the one that can stop the work of the enemy. You are that one because you're the one that's joined to him. Now, when we read the scriptures, we know that the first testament, because Jesus said this is the new testament in my blood, right? So that means that there was an old one if there's a new one, right? And so the, most of what we find in the Old Testament, or what I like to call the First Testament, is a shadow or a type or a fourth speaking of what was to come. So let's look at Numbers chapter 21, okay? And let's look at how God talked to us about the coming of Jesus and this blood and this body. In Numbers 21. Do I want to come to 21 first? I don't think so. I want to say what it says, but I want to go someplace else first. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 10 first. And then we'll go back over there. You're with me at 1 Corinthians 10. He says, moreover, brethren, verse 1, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. You know, talking about the Red Sea, the cloud that was over them that followed them as they were in the wilderness. And were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat. You see that? And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. Do you see that? All right. They ate the same spiritual meat and that bread that we take, that spiritual bread, isn't it? Because it's the body of Jesus. So you see, communion was being taken when they had that manna. The manna came from where? Heaven. So they had spiritual bread and they had spiritual drink. Do you remember the rock? Do you remember the rock that Moses had to speak to the rock and he hit that rock? He was you don't hit Jesus. It ain't time for him to be hit. You hit him prematurely. The water came out of the rock. You remember? That's why Moses couldn't go in because he was supposed to speak and he hit it. He was upset with folk that and mad. All right. The people made Moses mad. 
And God told him, well, speak to the rock and it will give you water. And he's like, these people, you know how you get mad at people? And he was angry at the people and he hit that rock. The water came out. But it wasn't time for Jesus to be crucified. That wasn't supposed to have been there. So he wasn't supposed to hit that rock. He was supposed to speak to the rock because God was freely given. So that water that came out of that rock, that was Christ. So they drank of that water and they ate of that bread. It was spiritual water and spiritual bread. All right. So it's a type and a shadow of that spiritual bread, the body of Jesus, and that spiritual drink, the blood of Jesus that we would consume. When Jesus was on the cross and they pierced him in his side, what came out? Water and blood. All right. You see that? That was the time for him to be hit when he was on the cross and the water came out. And that's our new birth. The water and the blood. What comes out when a woman gives birth? Water and blood. So it was showing that that birth, he was showing the birthing of those that would come. All right. So in the wilderness, they were consuming communion, that shadow that was to come. All right. So let's go back now to Numbers 21. We'll come back to 1 Corinthians 10 so you can hold your place there, too. OK. So in Numbers 21, it says that. Um, King Arhad, the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south, heard that Israel came by the way of the spies and he fought against Israel and he took some of them prisoners. Israel vowed a vow to the Lord and says, if you'll indeed deliver this people into our hand, we will utterly destroy the cities. So the Lord listened to the voice of Israel, delivered up the Canaanites and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. And he called the name of that place Hormah. They journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. What was discouraged? The soul of the people because of the way. That means because of what they were experiencing, because of what they had to go through. Sometimes your soul gets what? You get, it gets, she said, in the way. <laughs> Your soul gets in the way. It does get in the way. <laughs> Your soul gets discouraged because of what you're experiencing, what you're having to go through, right? You get discouraged because it might take a long time for something to come to pass. You get discouraged because you want to see this happen right now, God, and it's not happening right now, God. <laughs> you get discouraged because um, you feel like the more I try, the harder things are happening to me. The more things are happening to me, the, the further behind I'm getting. You, you get discouraged because you believe the word of God, but you don't see it manifesting in your life. You get discouraged. And it's making you believe that what you believe is the lie rather than what you're seeing happening right here. Man. So the people got discouraged. And the people spoke against Moses. The people spoke against God and against Moses. And see, this is what your soul will do. It'll start blaming somebody. Your soul will never blame itself, even though your soul is really the problem. So your soul will begin to place the blame somewhere else. So the people began to murmur and complain against God and against their leader. And you know how it is sometimes. Um, I think pastor should have done this or that. I think pastor should have said this or that. I don't believe it. I think she's just trying to get my money for herself. You know, that, that, pre that discouragement pushes you and makes you say and do things, right? So they begin to say wrong things out of their mouth. He says, wherefore, this is what they said. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Now God, God gave them victories every time they were faced with an enemy. He calls them to win. And you remember how I said it last Sunday, how people can only look at the negative how she said she didn't read 
the, the response against the negative, she just saw negative response, negative statements, and there she went. You've been, you've been programmed by the enemy to only see, think, feel, and believe negative. And when the good comes along, you've been programmed to say, that's just too good to be true. And you can't believe it. It's hard for people to believe that God, the creator of the universe, loves everybody. They don't want him to love people that are murderers. They don't want God loving them. They don't want God to love anybody that said a, a negative word to them. Don't love those people. They call me nigger. Don't love them, God. Don't love those people. They stole my money. And they don't want God loving anybody that they feel are not just right. They can't believe that God still loves everybody and they don't want to accept that so they don't want to accept God. And so they become discouraged at God. I think that she didn't really get that money like you said, so I'm not going to be giving mine. I got to keep this money. I've got to pay these bills. And see, when you come into this communion table, it's going to help you in your soul against these types of discouragements. You're coming to this communion table because this table is reminding you that you are perfect in your spirit. And this table is going to help eradicate, resolve, dissolve, and get rid of those things that's harming you in your soul. Amen? Amen? Because we've been guilty of speaking against our God and our leaders. But we're, we just repent, amen? But let's look and see what happened here. And they said, you brought us all the way out here, and now we're going to die. He says, for there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loathes this light bread. I love light bread too. The white bread, don't eat it. But this, what they're saying is this worthless bread. Now, how can you, how can you say my soul is low than this bread? But before you said there was no bread. Ain't no bread out here and ain't no water out here. The water was coming out of the rock and the bread was falling from heaven. They said, this is worthless. This is worthless. See, see, Satan wants you to believe that the communion table is worthless. I mean, what is this little piece of bread? They don't even give you enough to get full. And that little swig of drink, it ain't, you, it ain't even enough to wet your tongue. That, that is useless. You don't have to do that. He wants you to think you're useless. You're worthless. This communion table is reminding you of that lie. That no, you are very valuable. And this table contains power and you're coming and you're reminding yourself that you and Jesus have covenant. You're reminding yourself that you and God are in covenant. You're reminding yourself that God is with you and you're telling your soul, eat this bread. Because when I eat this bread, I'm joining with Jesus. When I drink this cup, I'm joining in the blood of Jesus. I'm joining in the power. I'm joining in the resurrection. I am resurrected with Christ. You see? But he wanted them to, to feel worthless, that God wasn't with them. And this is worthless. It's, it's even useless to be following Moses. What is it going to get you but death? Right? Right? He wants you to think that, but you come to this table and you remind him when you break that bread, you remind him, this is the power that set me free. This is the power that's keeping me free. This is the power that's keeping my soul connected to the Holy Ghost. When I drink this cup, I'm reminding myself that Jesus has paid it all, that everything in my life, I owe it to him because I'm a free man. I'm a free woman. Amen. Glory to God. So they said it's worthless. In verse six, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people. And much people of Israel died. See, when you loathe 
the communion table, when you loathe that spiritual bread and that spiritual drink, you, you let all your defenses down. And so Satan can come in and bite you. He gonna bite the stuff inside of you. Have you ever been bit by a bug and it's really hurt bad? You say, good gracious, that thing bit the soup out of me, right? Anybody heard that phrase? <laughs> she said, no, I never heard it. <laughs> yeah, bit the soup out of me. That means your insides was coming out. Your blood, you're bleeding. The serpents will bite. Well, how does, how does Satan bite you today? It's not a little serpent. You don't see the little snakes coming. So how does he bite you? How does he get in there? In those thoughts, he's biting you with those thoughts, those negative, toxic thoughts. Those thoughts that say, you're not going to make it. You're going to have to work all your life. You're going to be 85 years old, still working. You're going to never have no money. You're not going to be able to travel and see the world. You, you're going to barely be able to get your wife something. You really don't have no money to get married, so you can forget that. I mean, these toxic thoughts he tells you. He's biting you. Don't nobody really love you. Nobody care nothing about you. He's biting you. You can't do this schoolwork. It's too hard for you. You, you might, might as well just, you're going to be a laborer. You're going to be a hard laborer all your life. You, you can't ascend. You can't excel. You're not that smart. He's biting you. This is why you run to the communion table. You says, no, I'm taking of this bread and I'm taking of this blood and I'm renewing my mind. I'm keeping my soul in check. I'm going to protect myself. Look at what happened. Let me show you. He says in verse seven, therefore the people came to Moses and he says, we have sinned. See, he says, I recognize that we in sin because the Satan is biting us. Let me get this sin out. He says, we've spoken against the Lord and against you. See, they repented. They told what they did. He says, now pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. He says, we're wrong. See, when you come to this communion table, you can come before God and say, listen, I have been wrong. These bites, I've been taking on these bites. These thoughts from Satan, I've been letting them run my life, but not anymore. I am not letting any of those thoughts run my life. I am not associating with them. I'm not building any memory trees with them. I am getting rid of them. They are not going to ruin my life. I repent of saying it. I repent of thinking it. I repent of doing that. I'm not going that way anymore. I need you, God, to get me free from these serpent bites. I'm going to take this body and take this blood and identify with who I really am. I'm shifting my soul and making it realign with my spirit. I'm not going to be a renegade anymore. Amen? No more renegade for me. And that's what the people did. They came to Moses. And they says, pray for us. It says, Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, make you a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looks upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten, had bitten, not will bite, had bitten, this is a good word, any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Amen? God made a way out for them. And God made a way out for you at this communion table. God already understands. I don't care how hard I try to teach you. You're going to do something you don't have any business. You're going to say it. I don't know. He says, Paul told us, he said, I done found something out. What I want to do, I don't do it. And what I've already determined I'm not going to do, I keep doing it. He says, I am a wretched man. That's the soul. That soul doesn't want to do right. And you're constantly having to work with it. Constantly. God gave you a way out at this communion table. That when you take this body and you take this blood, that you begin that process. I'm going to live. I was bitten, Lord. 
I took that thought. I went over into sin. I took that thought. I went over into laziness. I took that thought. I ate something I shouldn't have eaten. I took that thought. I repent. He says, you go to look at it. As soon as they looked on that serpent that was up on that stick, they were healed. As soon as you come to this communion table, you're healed. You got to take your healing. This communion table has the power to heal your body. Amen. You will be healed. You will be delivered. You'll be set free. No matter what ailment you got in that body this morning, when you take this body and blood of Jesus, this spiritual food and this spiritual drink, take it into your body and recognize, wait a minute, I'm coming to be healed. I'm coming to be made whole. I am not going to walk out the way I walked in. Not that I'm taking of this communion. This is the body and the blood of Jesus. This is my healing. This is my deliverance. This is my forgiveness. This is my hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is my strength. I'm coming to this table. I am one with Jesus. Whatever Jesus have, I have it. Whatever Jesus can do, I can do it. I was reading something and I can't think of the person's name right now that said it. But it says that um, man can do multiple things. And it was a whole list. Change a diaper, go to the moon, create software, sweep a floor. It just it had all kinds of things. And they were a, a mixture. It was a mixture of regular little mundane things. And it was a mixture of, of really high thinking things. And he says, being specialized is for insects. It says insects can do one thing. A mosquito can do one thing. <laughs> a bumblebee can do one thing. But you are created in God's image, and you are well able to do many things. Imagine your life if all you could do was one thing. Just one thing. This is the only thing I know how to do. Boy, wouldn't that be horrible. You would be so dependent upon someone else. Now, all of us have strengths. I, you know, I can do a lot of things, but I'm not skilled in everything that I know how to do. And so some people are more highly skilled in areas than others. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You getting this? This is good news. Think about how many times you've been bit. This table's getting ready to wipe it out. This table, you know, the doctors say, there's a high probability that you will catch the mumps, the measles, rubella. So what do they do? They give you a vaccination. And what is that vaccination supposed to do? Yes, yeah, it's your preventer. It's your immunization against, right? Communion table is your immunization against those sat satanic bites. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He might bite you, but it won't overtake you. Amen? He might bite you, but you won't submit to it. Because you'll keep reminding yourself, even if you have to get up every morning and take communion because you're trying to overcome some one particular thing, you inoculate yourself every morning. This bread and this drink, I'm taking and this is my inoculation. This is my immunization shot right here so that when the bites come, I won't submit. Amen. This is good news. God has given you everything that you need to win. It's time for you to win. It's time for you to win. It's time for me to win. It's time. It's time. Amen. You got to win. You should start winning. Today is your winning day. You're going out here a winner. Fully vaccinated. No more bites that's going to overcome you. Amen. Amen. Now let's go back to first Corinthians. Let's see what he said to us. We see that they just like us had this opportunity, right? 
of being free, of communing with the Lord. We want to look at the communion table as our entrance into this presence of God. We know it's the, the Hebrews tell us it's the body of Jesus that gave us this entrance, right? And the blood of Jesus is what enabled us to walk in because sin couldn't walk in before Father. So the blood cleansed us and his body made the way. You understand that? The blood cleansed us, his body made the way. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Amen. And so as, as I'm training you to renew your mind, to meditate on the word, to rewire your thinking, rewire that brain. You know, I'm, I'm remembering of uh, the old timey circuit boards of the telephone company. Some of you may have seen some on the show or some of you may not, but it was a board. And this board had a lot of wires that you could plug in to different numbers. And the telephone operator, when you would call, it would go to the telephone operator, and then she would ask you the number, that you tell her the number that you wanted, and she'd pick up that cord and plug you into that number. And you'd get to talk. And she'd sit there and listen to the conversation. <laughs> uh, now, what, so when there's a lot of wires in there, if she plugged you into the wrong one, you get to talk to somebody you didn't want to talk to. And they say, who is this? And you say, who is this? No, that's not who I want. And you hang up and they hang up and you try it again. And she would get her wires crossed sometimes. Well, see, when you pick up those toxic thoughts, when you pick up those negative thoughts, when you allow Satan's bite to be accepted by you, the wires are all crossed over. So when you rewire your brain, you take that wrong wiring out and you plug it in the right place. Amen? You've got to do this. Say, I've got to do this. Say, I am spirit. And there's nothing wrong with me. My soul, on the other hand, got some work. All right? And who's going to get that worked out? That's why the scripture says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Because you got to get this soul right. You are born of God's spirit. You know, and anybody that's listening, if you're not born of God's spirit, it's the easiest thing in the world to do. You just raise your hand before God or you can put your hand on your heart or you can just put your hand on your head. It don't even matter. All you need to do is tell him, Jesus, I believe that you are the savior and I want you as mine. I mean, it's not hard. Jesus comes in so quick because that's what God sent him to do. It's not hard to be born again. The challenge comes in living it because your soul doesn't want to submit to what you are. No, this is not who I am. You might want to do that, but I ain't going to church. You might want to tithe, but I'm not tithing. This is what your soul says to you. You might want to pray. I'm not getting ready to pray. I'm not, I'm not doing that. You, mm-hmm. That's your soul. <laughs> and and now somebody should be saying, amen, pastor, right now. Because <laughs> you know that's the way your soul treats you. And you really have that fight. You, don't, you really don't have time to fight your brother and sister. You got a bigger fight right there inside of you with that soul. Because it's busy telling you what it's not going to do. I'm not doing it. You hear the word of God and it touches you, it inspires you. And, and, and you who is spirit comes up to your soul and says, we're going to do this. And your soul says, no, we're not. It'll even cuss you. No, we're not doing that. I've been saving too long for this money. I am not giving any of it. I mean, that's your soul. And so what you have to do is say, oh, no, let me renew you. Let me re rewire you because your wiring is messed up. And then once you get the wiring straight, when you tell your soul to give, your soul just reaches in and gives because you've gotten it in alignment with you. Come on now. Y'all can see this, right? Somebody say something to let me know you really know this. Look at 1 Corinthians. This is 1 Corinthians. So it takes some time to renew your mind. So in 1 Corinthians, it says in, in um, verse 4, 1 
1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 says, they, they all did drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Christ followed them in the wilderness, giving him his bread, which was manna, and his blood, which was the water out of that rock. Verse 5 says, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. Remember, we read why he was not well pleased with them, right? Because they complained against God and Moses. It says, for they were what? Scattered, overthrown in the wilderness, died in the wilderness. You see that? Scattered, overthrown, died. Is that, is that your destiny? No, no, no. That is not your destiny to be scattered, overthrown, or death. That is not for you. You're children of God. So you got to ask yourself, well, why am I seeing that in my life? Say, I shall see it no more. He says in verse 6, now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. So Paul is going to identify some of these things, right? Neither, he says neither. So why does he say neither? It's telling you this is the reason why God was not pleased with them. This is what causes overthrown, scattered, and death to happen. You can't be an idolater. What's an idolater? You worship idols. Anything that you put over God. If God's not first, you're an idolater. Right? If money is first, if job is first, if spouse is first, if TV is first, if food is first, if sex is first, anything that's first and God ain't first, you're in idolatry. You understand? If sleep is first, cleaning up is first, anything that's first instead of God, you're over in idolatry. You've been bitten. You didn't know you were bitten. Communion is going to get that bite off of you. Amen. And all you have to do is repent. I didn't know that. And switch, right? Just switch. Just make that U-turn, right? He says, neither be you idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. So he says, you don't, you don't come into the house of God and then go out there and do some of that idolatrous stuff. That's what he's asking us, right? Verse 8 says, neither. This is something they did that you're not going to do. These are the bites that Satan is trying to put in your life. These are the thoughts that are coming in, right? He says, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day, 23,000. I looked at that and I said, you know, God was real serious about fornication. He killed 23,000 people. It was 23,000 people committing adultery. I mean, committing fornication. And he killed every one of them. 23,000 people in one day. I bet you that helps somebody not commit fornication. Say, no, bro, I am not going that way. I just saw them people die yesterday. I know, right? But you know, some people said he ain't going to catch us. That was then. He's, they said God's, God's anger is appeased. Come on, we can do this. I'm serious. I'm sure they did that. And see, people said God's anger is appeased today. That's why fornication's persist. But his anger has not been appeased. He's angry at fornication. He's angry at idolatry. Look at verse 9. He says, neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. What's the end goal of Satan? And it has not changed. Anytime you take his thought, is going to produce stealing, killing, destroying. Anytime you take his thought, that's all it can produce. It cannot produce love. It cannot produce peace. It cannot produce joy. It cannot produce wealth. It's not designed that way. It's designed to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus' thought, on the other hand, produces wealth, strength, health, joy, prosperity, healing, deliverance, peace, because it's designed that way. Amen. His end goal is an abundant life always. But we see idolatry. We see fornication. We see tempting the Lord. 
Look at verse 10. He says, neither murmur you as some of them also murmured and were destroyed by the destroyer. So you see these bites? These are some bites that have happened in your life. These are some toxic thoughts. These are some toxic decisions that has happened in your life, right? And you can see it in the scriptures and say, this is why it happened. Amen? This is why. Because I've been taking communion and going back and taking Satan's thoughts. I didn't understand that communion was protecting me, shielding me. And I know some people won't take communion and say, no, I'm not worthy. They won't take communion. Well, if you're born again, you're worthy. You better take this communion. This communion is what's bringing you out. This communion is what's helping you. This communion is what's shielding you. This communion is reminding you, hey, you're not in this alone. This communion table says the grace of God has been extended to you. That's why fornicators aren't, aren't killed today. Because of the grace of God. Amen. That's why liars are still here. It's the grace of God. That's why murderers and so forth. It's God's grace. It's been extended. God's grace has been extended. Thank you for your grace, God. And we'll take this grace and we're going to work on this soul so that this soul can be in alignment with our spirit so that we can live this high life. Amen. So we can live the good life. Amen. So we can live that great life. Thank God for his grace. We wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for the grace of God. Because we were bitten, smitten, and head over heels in it, weren't we? Man, we didn't know we were in the wrong way, but we were living large. We just weren't in charge. And so now that you're born again, you have the ability to live large and be in charge. Amen. That's the good life, to live large. And to be in charge. Amen. And verse 11 says what? For our examples. It's an example. Don't do that. <laughs> right? That's the example. They were written for our admonition. It, this was so that we could understand. This communion table. This way of escape that's been given to us. It's the way of escape. Paul says, oh, what a wretched man I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Jesus Christ has delivered us. So when you come to this communion table, you're coming to get your healing, to get your freedom, to get your deliverance. It's your reminder. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't be overthrown. I'm one with Jesus. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, I don't have to take this wrong thought. No, he bit me, but I'm coming to get free from this bite. Wait a minute, I can renew my mind. Wait a minute, the Bible told me that I'm one with Jesus. Let, let me come, let me hurry up to the communion table. So this is why it's so important for you to take communion at home often, every day, as much as you can, because it helps you. Get your thinking on right. Amen. It helps you get your thinking on right. My thinking has to be on right. You're the smart ones. You're the courageous ones. You're the ones committed to the word. You're the one who loves God. You're the one that has God working with you. You're the one that's never separated from God. You're the one that's the overcomer. You're the one that can do all things. You are the excellent one. You're the one whose hands, if it touches it, it's going to prosper. That is who you are. That is who you are. This communion table is reminding you of that because the world is trying to steal it from you. It's trying to tell you you're nothing and nobody, but you've got to come back to this table and remember who you are. You've got to remember that you're the strong one. You're the bright one. You're the courageous one. You're the one that has this ability to create. You're the one that tells demons to stop and they stop. You're the ones that speak the word only and people are healed. You are that one that brings peace. You're the one that brings deliverance. You're the one that brings the answers. You are that one. Hallelujah. You are that one. Glory to God forever. Glory to God forever. You're the one. Say, I'm the one. I'm the one, Lord. I am the one. 
Glory to God. You getting this? I'm getting this. I'm getting this. Let's keep reading this. I want you to see something here because he's talking about communion. He says, so now all these things happen to them for examples and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinks he stands take heed lest you fall. There is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. This communion table is giving you your escape route. The Holy Ghost gives you your escape route. The word of God gives you your escape route. God is saying he's going to keep trying to bite you. He's going to keep trying to inject thoughts in your mind that's not right. But I want you to know that there is nothing coming to you that is just not common. Amen. Stop thinking that Satan is so super. He's not. He's common. You know, in the vernacular of the day, if something's common, it's low class, right? You so common, that means that's really bad, right? You got to start looking at Satan, he's common. Those things that he's trying to give to you, make you think and make you believe and make you live on, make your heart hurt, it's common. Right? Mm -mm. What you got to say is, no, I have my way of escape. The word of God will start coming up in you. Run to the communion table. Carry it around with you. Carry you a little pack of crackers and a little juice. So, oh, I, I need to get an escape right quick here. I'm very serious about this. I'm very serious about this. Because we have weapons that we don't use. You know, if you were in a, in a fight, in a war, and you have a Gatling gun, machine gun, you have a pistol, you have an automatic and you have a saber, and they're coming against you with firepower, and you pick up the saber. Listen, man, you got to get too close to them before you can use it. They'll kill you before you ever get there. Why don't you use one of these uh, automatic weapons over here, one of these bombs? No, no, I'm, I'm, this is what I'm comfortable with. Well, you are losing because you're trying to stay comfortable with your little saber. You better pick up on you some of this other weaponry God gave you. You, know, you. you want to always say, well, whenever the Lord's will. Well, honey, that is not a weapon. The Lord's will is not a weapon. Why do people say that phrase? That is not a weapon of war. You understand me? You got your wires crossed. A weapon of war is the communion table. A weapon of war is the word of God. A weapon of war is the anointing that God has placed on you. A weapon of war is the use of angels. Those are weapons. It's a weapon of war. And if you don't pick these weapons up, you're going to lose the fight. Amen? Don't be in this fight losing. God's not pleased if you lose. When he's giving you everything to win. He's giving you everything to win. How would you like it if the boxer gets in the ring and refuses to put on his gloves and put his and refuses to put his mouth gear in? He's like, boy, he's gonna whip the stuffings out of you. Put your gloves on. Put your mouth gear in. He's gonna knock you when he out. He's gonna knock all your teeth out. He's gonna knock you out. There's nothing to absorb that punch. And you would not like your guy going in that ring like that. How'd you like it if the race car driver just got out there in just a regular car? You're going to get killed, guy. You have no protection. No way those cars flip. You need some protection out there. How'd you like it if your football team, the one that you say, it ain't yours. I know you think it's yours, but it ain't yours. They ain't gave you not one penny yet. They made a lot of money, but you didn't get any, so it's not yours. But I know you believe it's your team. But you go ahead and keep believing that life you want to. That is not your team. That is people that you root for. 
Hope they win, but it's not your team. Why are you fighting with the person in, in, at work about that team? They ain't gave you nothing. See how you miswired up here? You wear their colors proudly, but I don't see you proudly wearing Jesus colors. And, and he really does give you something. You see how you miswired up here? That soul is all miswired. Yet, how would you like it if the team that you like goes onto the football field with sneakers, some shorts, and a little um, hoodie? And they said, we come in. You was like, what are they doing? You wouldn't like that. You would say, no, nah, man, you got to get back in the locker room. Where, where's your pads? Where? Man, they're going to they gonna hurt you. You already know we done lost this game. You will hold your head, you will shake it, and you'll drop it because you know you've already lost the, the ball game. They're going to wear you out. Yet you come out without your weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to, through God to the pulling down of strongholds. All right? So communion table... It's a weapon of war. Amen. So you take your weapon with you. And when you need to use it, pull it out. You know, I was listening to Apostle Thompson and he was said, everybody say, ta, 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 ta. Say it. <laughs> say it again. Say it with some fence. Ta, 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 ta. He said, that's a weapon of war because sometimes you don't have the right words. Come on now. Yeah. Say it's bothering you and you want to say, Father. You don't have no words to say. And sometimes you can't even form tongues. It is not working, right? Sometimes you need to say, cha, 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 cha. <laughs> Against that thing, right? I'm just going to, I'm just going to take my jackhammer. Everybody ever seen a jackhammer? What does a jackhammer do? It breaks stuff up pretty quick, doesn't it? You can be out there with a chisel and a hammer and pop, 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 it'll take you a while. You can get it done, but pop, pop, take a while, won't it? So sometimes in your carnal mind, in your soul, you don't know what to say, but you got a hammer and a chisel, pop, pop, trying to make it work. You need a jackhammer. That jackhammer hit that concrete and that guy starts shaking it and man, it's breaking it up, right? That's what, cha, 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 Say all these, all these problems I got. I'm breaking it up, Lord. That's my weapon of war. Sometimes you can't get to that communion table. You might be at work and, and it's in your purse or it might be in your desk or it might be in the car. You can't get to it fast enough. Say, Lord, I'm taking my jackhammer against this thing and I'm going to break it up, amen, and it is going to be over with. Use these weapons. Use your weapons. Amen. Glory to God. You receive that? All right, we're going to receive our communion. I'm ready to take communion. I don't know about you. You ready? Yay. Come on, Reginald, and help us with this. Oh, that's right. They're the little people know how to cha 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 cha. We're going to break it up. Break it up. We thank you and praise you so much, God, for this. If you'll pass it to him, please. Glory to God. This bread is what? Spiritual bread. It's the body of Jesus. This drink is what? It's spiritual drink. It's the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 14, the first Corinthians 10 says, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee idolatry. Flee everything else too. He says, I speak as to wise men, judge you what I say. Look at verse 16, the cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, are being, for we being many are one bread and one body. Did you see that? You got to remember, this is reminding you, this is your bread. This is you we eat. This is me. This is Christ. Because he says, although it's a lot of us, we are one bread and we are one body. And we, for we are all partakers of that one bread. You see that? This is why Paul said in 2 Corinthians 11 that uh, some are asleep because they don't discern the Lord's body. Because you are the Lord's body. 
We are the Lord's body. And so as we take this today, we're going to take in this body and we're going to take in our help. We're going to remember who we are. We're not helpless, useless, worthless. We're powerful men and women of God. We're one with Jesus. We have his mind. Amen. So I want you to take and break it. If I can get mine open. I can't get mine open. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Here we go. You ready? It was kind of a challenge this morning. Break, eat all of it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm one with you. Hmm, I'm powerful. I was bitten. Now I'm healed. Glory to God. I receive my healing. I receive my deliverance. And this cup is the blood of Jesus. It was poured out for me, freeing me from sin. Let's drink all of it in remembrance of Jesus. I remember who I am. I am a God. I am a creator. I am a healer. I am an innovator. I am a redeemer. I am God's child. I am a son of God. You got to remember, recite who you are. It's remembering. Yeah, everything that Satan has tried to do will not be accomplished in my life anymore. Everything that Satan has tried to do will not be accomplished in your life anymore. You set yourself in opposition to him. Set yourself in opposition to him. All your answers are on the inside. All your answers are on the inside. God is in covenant with you. You are in covenant with God. Hallelujah. Say this with me. I will not permit my soul to be ignorant another day. My will, my mind, my imagination, my emotions, my desires, my memory. I will not let them be ignorant. I, get, I keep them renewed. With the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I'm going to speak this over you. You know, whenever something's spoken over you, that's right. You did good. Hallelujah. The power is broken. No, I'm going to speak this over you. The power is broken. The doors are open. Everyone is released from the beast. So get ready. This is your time to increase. All that has been organized against you will be surprised when they run up against you. For you see this day, you turn into an eagle and a lion. That type of anointing causing you to fly high and walk heavy. Amen. Amen. Take that. Take that. Eagle anointing. Lion anointing. Everything that's been organized against you, they're going to be shocked because they run up against the wrong one this time. All that negative is destroyed over you. I weaken its power. I break its power over you. You step out of agreement with it. And that is destroyed in your life. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Glory to God. Did you receive this morning? Now you can take communion anytime you get ready. 
knowing. Amen. You know something. Take that jackhammer and get it. Amen. Amen. You know something. Say, I know something. I know something. Mm -hmm. I know something. Glory to God. I know something. Amen. I know something. Hallelujah. I know something. Yes, I do. I know something. I've been vaccinated. I can't get bit. I can't hold no bitten thoughts. You know, how many of you ever think about getting the measles? You say, I don't know. I'm going to hope my child don't get measles. No, because you've been vaccinated against it. If measles come on somebody, I say, What's, didn't, you, didn't you get your shot? That's the first thing you think. You got measles. You didn't get the shot. So when your soul tries to accept those thoughts that Satan gave as a bite, you say, oh, no, I, I can't take that thought. I already got the shot. He said, the shot didn't take. Go, go, go back to the communion table. Go to the communion table. Amen. Praise God forever. We're going to receive our offering. I thank God for this. I'm just kind of basking in that communion. I took that. I'm basking in that. Hallelujah. I have one. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>